please like this video and subscribe to our channel. This is the January meeting of the Central Florida Computer Society. Uh, we're doing it virtually via Zoom and the meeting today, rather than having a, a individual speaker, Mike Ungerman suggested that he had planned to do some monitoring of the CES Consumer Electronics show that's held in Vegas every year. Uh, that was drastically shortened and uh, affected by the, <clears throat> the spike in the coronavirus Omicron variant. But um, anyway, he and Huey had accumulated some reviews that have had, uh, been published and we're going to listen to them discuss and review those and they they'll provide the links if we want to go back and look at them further ourselves later. So have at it, gents. Appreciate it. As Stan said, this is the Central Florida Computer Society. And uh, Mike Ungerman and I are going to talk about CES 2022. Mike and I uh, have attended Consumer Electronics Show, now simply known as CES, in person and virtually for many years. Given the pandemic and, and neither of us wanting to venture out to Las Vegas this year, I don't think I could run the floor anymore anyway. Uh, we put together this virtual review of what we saw presented at C CES, but the two pictures you see there are back uh, the last time we went to CES. Uh, and Mike was in one of the futuristic chairs and I'm talking to one of the vendors there. So let's go I, ahead. I, might, I was gonna say before you start, go back to that previous question, uh, slide a second. Um, Going all the way back to Comdex, which was what turn of turn of the nineties, I guess. Yes, um, yeah. We had been trekking to Las Vegas almost every year, and in, in a couple of cases, they would do a Comdex East or a CES East, and we would go up to Atlanta. And I think once we went to Miami just before the big hurricane hit, hit down there. But um, I think once once the internet really gained hold and bloggers and uh, press conferences, you know, went to the online format, uh, I found quite, quite frankly that, that I really didn't want to go every year. And I wound up going about every third year just for the, the, the experience and started looking at all the blogs and all the uh, press conferences here at home and found we actually got more information right from our office desks than we did with all the running around. I mean, we had fun. We got all kinds of swag and free food and free drinks and whatever else was in some of those um, those hospitality suites that the, that the vendors set up. But um, this is a good way to do it, actually. And uh, there, there's a wealth of information online. Back to you, Chet. All right, so let's take a look. First, we're gonna look at the how to geek list. And by the way, there is a slide that has the links to each of these. Uh, there's, I think three or four reviews that I'm going to use for, for this. Uh, there's a page of that and there's a page of some other things too that we'll talk about a little bit later. But this is from the how to geek website. And this is their best of the CES and their awards. So let's look at some of the items that they discovered at CES. Their best of CES item was to the Roborock S7 Mark uh, Max V Ultra, which is a robot vacuum. Uh, I know Bob G has one, Ron Brown has two or three different ones. I have a shark that I bought, I think about a year ago. Uh, there are several of us who have tried and, and used uh, several of these different brands, and there's several models, the Robo, uh, the, uh, the iRobot one uh, has, I, th I think I counted well over 10 different models at, at various price, price ranges. So there's a, 
I'm not sure why they decided this was the best of the show or or why this was the best, but uh, it certainly is uh, one to look at if you're considering uh, a robot uh, vacuum. I'll just make a, a quick comment. Uh, later on, you're going to see a list of YouTube playlists that I put together, and there is about a 20-minute review of the RoboRock and what they're saying on the RoboRock is sort of an integration of robotics now with household electronics. And they've put in more intelligence. They've also added the ability to do uh, one-way video using the same cameras that are, are helping it stay on its path and two-way audio. So you can now communicate with your pets and theoretically with your kids and they can communicate with you if you're not home. Yeah, they're adding all kinds of things. Uh, iRobot has a model that uh, will, if you have a dog, it will uh, figure out if there is some poop on the floor and will will not pick it up and, and muck up the inside of your machine. Uh, it will go around it. It will not tr attempt to vacuum it up. So there's all kinds of gadgets in these things now. And even there's even models that have the ability to mop separately. And you can get either a, a separate robot mop or you can get one as a combination mop and vacuum. I have two of them there. Uh, they're uh, nice machines. I have two of them, one upstairs, one downstairs, or one in one level and then one in the other. And they are RoboRock and they're amazing machines. Thank you, Ken. Any other comments? Okay, the best laptop is the, De this is from, from How to Geek now, is the Dell XPS 13 Plus. Uh, and if you'll notice on the wrist rest, you don't see a trackpad, but there's one in there. It just doesn't show. So it, it's saying that there is no trackpad, but you can utilize just the area on your wrist uh, pad there. So that was one of the features of that particular model. And you'll also notice that the keys are what they call low low res keys, but I call them chiclet keys. They're uh, they're a little bit different than than a standard keyboard. Mike, any comments? Um, just to say that that last June I bought a compact Dell and um, from some of the capabilities that the mobile computing chips are providing, the new chips from Intel and the new chips from AMD, uh, longer battery life, faster processing, uh, requirements for less memory, uh, less storage space and so on, it's, and, and higher resolution screens as well. Um, getting a lot of a lot of desktop capability into these small notebooks yeah this is the 13 inch mike by do you have the article open i think it tells it uh these different one these different articles may mention when or if this is going to become available soon or whether it's no, still I, in did, the future. no I did not i'm sorry okay here's the best router it's a netgear raxe 300 uh, it has several, instead of having different antennas, the antennas are built into the two sides of this, but there are several different antennas. This one pretty much covers all of the items. I am going to just take a second here and whoops, no, and uns I want to go ahead and open the article. I'm going to put it on my other screen, which it is, and see if I can, uh, and then we'll full screen this again. There was another router that had the antennas that actually followed the device. Yeah, I, and I'm not sure we've got a, a picture of that one or not, but uh, yeah, it actually, they're moving all the time or they can move. Uh, but this one, let's see, I wanna come over here to the other, my other screen, this, uh, they don't have pricing on it just yet, but it's slated to be available for purchase later this spring, uh, was the XPS. And on this, it's saying the Netgear's Nighthawk uh, uh, Wi-Fi 6E uh, router 
has it all. This tri-band Wi-Fi 6E router packs six pre-optimized antennas, eight Wi-Fi streams, including two six gigahertz streams, four five gigahertz, uh, and two 2.4 gigahertz, and a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Basically, the Nighthawk uh, can handle the, just about any internet speed your local ISP and modem can throw at it. Uh, Netgear will sell the uh, Nighthawk RAXE 300 for $399 sometime in the first quarter. An exact date has not been uh, announced. The big key, I, I think, uh, with the routers is, is deciding, do you need a mesh network in your house? Yeah. And if you, if you need a mesh network, then you, you, you switch categories, sort of moving up and a little bit to the side. And, and you're, you're dealing with a base station plus satellites. So to invest this kind of money in a, in a very powerful net gear, if it covers your, your house and, and you don't need extenders, it probably would be a good way to go, especially for getting new Wi-Fi 6 devices. But if you're going to want coverage out in your garage, we have a couple devices actually mounted on the outside of our house. You got a security system that's outside with cameras on four corners of your house, things like that. I think you're going to want to go with a mesh network instead of a super duper, um, even moving antennas, centralized uh, router. The best Chromebook is the Acer Chromebook Spin 513. Uh, however, I'm I'm seeing some uh, some of the other uh, best ofs have other. Acer uh, have other Chromebooks uh, as the best, but this one uh, will begin selling uh, in June for about six hundred dollars. Uh, and let's see, this one's an eight-core MediaTek uh, Companio thirteen eighty CPU, military-grade uh, durability, and a thirteen point five inch twenty two fifty six by fifteen oh four resolution display with a three to two aspect ratio. All of this means that the Chromebook allows you to be productive and worry-free uh, about uh, and worry-free about damaging while on the go. So it's a it's a much heavier case, heavy duty case anyway. Uh, best accessories is the uh, Hyper uh, X Cloud Alpha wireless gaming headset. Uh, it's going to come out in February at about $180. Uh, HyperX already makes some of the best gaming headsets so far. And uh, let's see, it's going to have removable noise canceling microphone and the Cloud Alpha Wireless includes DTS Headphone X uh, spatial audio for a 3D realistic gaming experience. So this is more for a gamer, but certainly uh, uh, it's, since it's a removable microphone, might be a good, uh, uh, a really good headset to use for online uh, zooming and so on. But fairly expensive. Whoops. What I don't like about all of these is it's so massive and bulky. Yeah, and that's why I've been using these uh, uh, bone uh, yep. uh, condu yep. conductors, and I really like them. Uh, How to Geek, uh, this is the best TV, is a Samsung Neo QLED. And uh, this is, let's see what it's saying. Uh, it's in 4K and 8K models. The st uh, standout feature of this model in addition to 144 hertz inputs an improvement over last year's 120 hertz panels uh, for enhanced gameplay with next gen consoles the tv also includes a 14-bit backlit for more accurate brightness uh, shape adaptive light control and an ai driven object depth enhancer a lot of big terms uh, and let's see, uh, as with many announcements, final pricing and availability information is yet to be announced. 
I expect the 8K models to cost a premium due to the nature of the new screen technology. So any 8Ks are going to be expensive. My, my comments on, on all of the TVs we're going to see is what, in fact, you may want to go back to that just for a second. Is what can your eye actually see and perceive in your own home, sitting in your on your couch or your recliner, uh, eight to 10 feet away from the set? And this goes back probably at least five years, if not eight years ago, when, on one of the CES trips that I actually made to Las Vegas. And the night before the show, I went to a uh, electronics store and Fry's, uh, which we don't have here, but big used to be big, big West Coast chain. And they had um, the LG TV sets on their display from standard definition, which they still had, to high definition, which was 720p, to super high definition, which was 1080, 1080p, and to 4K, which had been introduced the year before. So it was the first production 4K sets. And it was all playing their standard demonstration video. And it was the same theoretically on all of them. I don't know if they'd actually adjusted them, but it was the same. So walking past these sets, maybe oh, let's say three feet away from the sets. Yes, you could see the difference. You could see the pixel size, you could see the motion, you could see all of that. But then using their floor tiles, I backed off 10 feet. So I counted off 10 feet. And then I started looking from left to right from standard definition to 4K. And I could definitely see a much sharper picture on a 4K set. But in between, I couldn't tell any differences. And at the time, we still had a Sony 52 inch here at the house, which was a 60 Hertz set. It was a 1080p, but there was no 1080p being you know, available back then. So it was either 1080i interpolation or it was you know, some DVDs that were upscaled. And as the technology increased, especially the streaming technology, I just couldn't see the difference. So. Last summer, I finally decided, all right, I'm going to come Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I'm going to get a new set. And I got a new 4K set. It's 75 inches. It's Sony. It's not a top of the line, but it's, it's an, an LED uh, set edge lit. And it's very nice. But my wife said to me, all right, now that you've been looking at this now for a couple of weeks, you really see any differences from that other set that we have? <laughs> Yeah, I can, but not that much. So the specs are there, especially if you see 8Ks coming. I don't know how my eyes would see a difference between 4K and 8K because the, the 4K I've got now knocks my socks off. Stephen? Yeah, that was a nice presentation you, you did uh, about installing your new set. Uh, a few years ago, I invested in some OLED, which is organic light emitting diodes. They were, and I made some money on it. In fact, I wish I still had it. I sold it, made a profit, but I don't know what QLED is, unless it stands for quantum. I mean, I don't know, you know, do you know what that, uh, what's the big deal on? We probably, we probably need to have a nice session on it because there are different, there are different technologies out there, but they right. ma keep making the pixels smaller and smaller. And they, they've also got on this Neo, it's how those smaller pixels are actually lit with micro, micro LEDs yeah. embedded in this thing rather than being on the edge. Well, and the OLED, thing... OLED actually emits its own light. Yeah. And it also uses, uh, I think, only 25% of the power <clears throat> that the other types of TV use. So uh, it, especially if you have a battery-operated device, I think they're using them now in cell phones and in small portable devices uh, like your, your laptop. It was expensive at the time, but I'm, I'm sure the price has come down now. <clears throat> Dick Vogel? One of the things you might want to think about when you uh, are looking for a new television set is from what angle you're likely to have to look at the set. Uh, the pictures, when they're directly 
in, when you're directly in front of the uh, television set, look quite good. But if you go off axis, off to the side, you'll notice quickly that some of the sets uh, do not perform as well as you would like. That's correct. Here at our house, we have two recliners separated by a little desk at, at the far end of a rectangular room and with a vaulted ceiling coming up towards us, which is good for projecting sound. And when guests come, they have to sit in a little couch that's along the edge of the wall on the other side of the kitchen. And, you know, for just catching the news or something like that, it's not bad. But if we're actually going to see a movie, I'll bring the kitchen uh, table chairs in and set them in front of the recliners, movie style, and let them, let them look at it. Back to you, Huey. Okay. The smartphone, and this was just announced, I think, this week is the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. Uh, uh, I know there's the Galaxy S21 and the S21 Pro. Now they got an FE, which is a fan edition. And uh, let me come back over here. See what it says on that. Uh, it's a less budget, uh, is it, less a budget Android phone and more an affordable version of the Samsung flagship. This means you get a, compatible, a comparable design and performance, but you sacrifice some of the premium design materials, get less RAM, and the cameras are a slight downgrade in megapixels. Uh, and uh, the FE will go on sale unlocked and through carriers starting January 11th. The six, gigabit, six gigabyte of RAM model with 128 gigabytes of storage will be about $700 while the upgraded eight gigabyte, 256 gigabyte unit will set you back about 769. Oh. I think, I think my, my comment would be, I don't know that I agree that it's best, but they're, you know, they're looking at announcements at CES because yeah. a lot of phone makers had announcements at CES and especially listening to uh, Ron Brown's comments during Tech, Tech for Senior, um, if you're going to get a, a smart watch, you almost, with almost every smart watch that's at the high end that's out there now, you've got to have a phone of the same brand in order to link to it. There is one, uh, I don't know if it's in our review or not, uh, that's put out by Garmin that's good for any Android phone. But if you had, if it, if you've been thinking about some of the health capabilities of the new Samsung smart watches and monitoring you're going to want a Samsung phone. And if you want to get the health benefits of the Apple watch, you're going to want to have an Apple phone. Okay, next item is the best mobile accessory is the Chipolo card spot. And if you're familiar with uh, uh, the tile and, and so on that you, you can tag, uh, you can put on your keychain and find where your keys are. This is about the size of a credit card and it goes in your wallet. It'll find your wallet. Uh, it's a thin wallet finder tracker that works exclusively with Apple's Find My Network. So it's only available for iPhones and, and, and iOS devices. It's about the size of a credit card and only 2.4 millimeters thick, but it still can produce a loud 105 decibel sound to help you find it. Plus the battery lasts up to two years that's in it. So uh, let's see, you can pre-order it for $35. Units should begin shipping in February. Should be, fun. should be fun if somebody took that out of your back pocket and you realized it and set it off. Oh yeah, that, that, that would be great, yes. 105 decibels. Yeah. I like this. It's best smart home Eve motion blinds. These battery powered smart blinds allow you to raise and lower the shades using your smartphone or voice assistant. Set a schedule, use a connect cord to com com uh, quickly change its position. Unfortunately for now, motion blinds only support HomeKit, which means you'll need an iPhone or an iPad to set it up 
and use the household gadget. Um, Eve, Eve Motion Blinds are available for purchase now from select blinds. Pricing availability will vary on the price, I'm sorry, uh, be based on your window size and which fabrics you choose. And I'm sure that they're going to make it available soon for the uh, Android as well. But uh, you can, uh, another thing that you can have an IoT or Internet of Things device by having a, uh, uh, a blind that you can raise and lower using your phone. Here's another computer, a best gaming computer is a Razer Blade 15. If you like RGB and premium gaming laptops, the Razer Blade 15 introduced at CES might be perfect for you. And let's see what I can find on this one. Um, there's a, it's, it's starts at, the base unit starts at $2,500. And uh, plans beginning, uh, Razer begins, uh, plans to begin selling it uh, on January 25th. So if you're a gamer, I, this might be the thing for you. I, I would venture to say that there aren't many dedicated gamers listening to us right now. I would they, venture to say you're correct. You they, probably you know, are the most that I know. <laughs> we, yeah, may have game, a, we may have I a use game. I use uh, Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator, which is probably the toughest on yeah. anything that you can find. Well, does it give any specs or I'm just going to look them up? Yeah, uh, yeah, we have a we have an associated uh, uh, presentation that has all of these with specs that, that we'll send yeah, out to everyone. Yeah, and if you go to the uh, uh, How to Geek uh, link that will be in one of the slides, and it was also on the first one, if you go to, to their best of page, uh, it'll, it'll give you more information on it. This is one of a, a, a couple of curved monitors from Samsung that I saw are on these best of list. I hope we get to the other one as well. But this is a, an Odyssey Neo G8. Uh, and let's see, it's a monitor of your dreams. It features 4K screen with 240 Hertz refresh rate, 100, uh, let's see, one millisecond response time, supports free, Sync Premium Pro G Sync and has 2000 nit peak brightness. To sum all of that up, this is one crazy game monitor that'll blow away most of the best common monitors. Uh, pricing hasn't been announced yet. I just put a, a 32 inch Samsung monitor uh, on my second desk, if you will. And uh, I know Huey, you also upgraded your, your monitors. Yeah, mine's and a 20, I got a 27 curved uh, so monitor. These, these do more than just gaming, especially now that they're into 4K. And I did actually consider instead of buying a new TV set, buy a 4K monitor, but to get up to the 65 and 75 inch, uh, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. and it just didn't make sense. But down in that in that range of about a thousand to two thousand dollars, if you are a dedicated gamer, um, you're going to see more and more of these very large monitors with a lot more capability. I know that's not yours, Mike, and it's not mine. Somebody's got a dog barking. If you'll, oh, I'm sorry, that's mine. Let me shut yeah. that off. My doorbell's barking. Oh, <laughs> uh, best audio is a high sense, uh, sound, uh. Speaker and soundbar. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, let's see what we find on it. Um, no pricing and is expected in the spring. One of the comments I'll, I will say is the, the TV sets these days are coming with a lot better sound than they used to. Uh, I did have a chance for about 15 minutes when they installed my new 75 inch TV to hear the TV speakers when they set it up. And they were okay, you know, nothing fantastic, but they were okay. So for somebody that's say in a small apartment and really wants to have better sound than what the TV provides, 
a sound bar in conjunction with a subwoofer like you see here, the larger rectangular box, and then add to that two rear speakers that are wireless. So you do get a, a surround sound. Can be an economical way to, to be, you know, have a more enjoyable movie experience. I still like a home theater amplifier with the, with the extra speakers, which we have here. And, and the new TV set that I got puts out Dolby DTX and Dolby Atmos, and it, it really makes a difference as far as what we hear on our home theater system. Yeah, what you have to be careful of is a lot of the TVs, the speakers are very small and they're, they're in the back, facing the back. So if you have them close to the wall or something, you're almost not going to be able to hear it. And so and they, soundbar, in some cases, they had, uh, when, the, when the Geek Squad was getting ready to install, they said, do you want this close to the wall? And I said, no, you know, I'd rather have it as far away from the wall as I can. So they, they moved them out. So I have a, about two inches between the back of the set and the wall with the mount that they, that they used. But, and that helps it reflect off the wall if, if you were going to use the TV speakers. Uh, best automotive, the Motorola Android Auto MA1. Uh, and this is for Android Auto. And it's, it, it plugs in and allows you to, uh, you've got to have the Android Auto installed. Uh, this item is only a $90 item, but it makes it easier to, uh, let's see, the Motorola dongle plugs into the USB port that's normally used for Android Auto and then becomes a wireless bridge to your phone. Uh, simply pair your device to the MA1 over Bluetooth and then call it a day. Going forward, your smartphone should power the Android Auto experience without plugging it into your uh, car. So that's something new. Uh, this we talked about on Tech for Seniors. Uh, it is a scale, but that thing above it is actually on a on a a string or it's, it's a wire that you then take that bar and you lift it up and, and bring it back down and you can uh, uh, do a body scan. And so with the help of four weight sensors, the 14 ITO electrodes in the base and four electrodes in the handle, the body scan can, can perform a six lead ECG capture of segmental body composition analysis and more. All this information is then saved in a companion app and tracks your weight, assesses nerve activity, and stores other me measurements. Uh, should be available for purchase the second half of the year. So for those of you who are conscious of, of a lot of that information. As I said on Tech for Seniors, I'll be damned if I have to pay for something to actually embarrass me. <laughs> this is the best household product is the Moen smart faucet with motion control you uh, wave your hand over it that starts the water and there's some hand motions you can do to make it warmer and colder I'll, I'll turn the handles <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to use the handles on it um, pricing hasn't been announced and availability hasn't been announced uh, this is the best fitness uh, is a trainer. And I guess you can imagine what you use that for. Uh, best design, Samsung, the frame. Uh, it's no secret, TVs are ugly. I don't think they're ugly, but somebody does apparently. And you can get a frame for it. And the frame uh, will come in sizes between 32 inches and 85 inches. Unfortunately, Samsung did not announce pricing or availability. The, uh, the Sony 52 that I had, that was its design, you know, 15 years ago. It came with a great big glass frame that was at least three inches from the corner to the beginning of the screen. And then you had a 52 inch screen inside it. So it, it sort of made you feel like you were looking at a larger TV, but it, I thought until recently that it was a, one of the more attractive units hanging on your wall. So apparently now, with a 4K and going to an 8K, what, what the key on this is that it's got a USB connection. I believe it's USB, it could be wireless Bluetooth also, but it has a connection to your TV and more or less as a screensaver, 
it has a, a series of art prints and you can actually subscribe to, in some cases free and in some cases pay for a subscription to um, originals and have those originals hanging on your wall where it's very, very difficult to tell because of the texture of what's being projected that you're actually looking at a TV or you're looking at a painting. Best concept, and this one I didn't quite understand. Uh, in a perfect world, various pieces of technology should be able to seamlessly work together. Uh, the moment you walk up to something like a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, at least that's the what they're, they're talking about, a concept flow. And what the article says is the frames, oh, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong one here. Uh, Dell's concept flow is the docking station of the future, differing from projects like Apple's universal contr uh, control that allows you to share a mouse, a keyboard between a Mac and an iPad. Dell's idea is essentially to a wireless docking station that connects to everything. Walk up to a desk with your computer and everything auto magically pairs without a hassle of plugging things in or going through a setup process. So you can have this keyboard sitting on the desk uh, for, your, for your desktop. You walk up with your phone and, and it automatically will pair with it and you can use it with your phone. No, I guess I guess some people want that. When I worked uh, for the government, we used to have notebooks at every workstation and they all had docking stations. So it was seamless. You just came to work, plugged your notebook in, closed the door, used the keyboard, used the mouse and used the monitor. So I guess what they're doing is, is pairing it all up wirelessly. OK, and this is a, a, a gamer thing, so I'm just going to show you that. And that, and that was it for the uh, How to Geek. Now we're going to a website uh, called Life Savvy and lifesavvy.com. And there's only to the uh, everything uh, and the kitchen sink. Uh, here's the best uh, work from a home accessory is an anchor video bar. So it's got the light built into the item. And so let's see what it says on that one. Okay, I left some things out of the other one here. So, oops. I'm well, I think order. that I think the I key on this is, is is much like what you're doing now. You have a light that's on a circular mount that's that's right on yes. your screen, right? Pointed at you. That's correct. And what they're doing here is they're giving you the light that's right on the camera and pointing at you and giving you the diffused light. Yeah, I need to open this up and then full screen this back. Whoops. Okay, so let's see what it says about this. Um, all of the features are integrated together for optimum performance. Um, the light bar will automatically adjust along with the camera itself to deliver optimal lighting. The $220 price point is a bit steep uh, as far as your average webcam goes, but pretty reasonable when you consider the, the anchor work is multiple video conferencing tools in one. If you uh, hit the anchor website before January 25th, you can spend a dollar to get on the early bird purchase list and get $35 off when this is released at the end of January. Oh, uh, let's see. It's a virtually a Swiss army knife uh, tool, a crisp video camera that can push a 2K resolution at 30 frames per second, a four microphone array designed to cut down on backward noise, background noise, and to round out the feature package, a light, a large lighting bar across the top. So it's got uh, extra microphones and, and a high quality camera. This one you may have seen. This is the Slage uh, Encoding Plus. Uh, uh, what it means, it's in practical terms for you, the consumer, it means that you can finally realize the dream of owning an iPhone, an Apple Watch as a smart key. While the pad supports regular pin entry and physical key, you can save the pin for guests and enjoy opening the door with your watch like the citizen of the future. So don't let, don't have your watch stolen. 
Yep. <laughs> they can get in your house too. Best air filter is the LG Puri Care Aero Tower. If you're into uh, that, and let's see. Um, and it doesn't give any pricing on it. It looks like it's one of those ionic type. Yeah. Best home sensor, AirThings, the View Plus. And this is uh, in, in, interest in home sensors and monitoring all kinds of, uh, has only gone up over time. And the pandemic has accelerated people's interest in keeping an eye on their home, especially in the air quality. How do you know what good air quality is or if you even have it? AirThings, a company with a long history of air quality monitoring, has a solution. It's a pill-shaped monitor that resembles a thermostat you can either mount on the wall or set on a table uh, or shelf. The device continually monitors air quality in your home for particulars, and then it gives some information. If you often feel sleepy at home, by the way, the last, um, the last one should be of particular interest to you. Uh, let's see, Vari variables of temperature, humidity, radon, and carbon dioxide. A best mattress is a sleep number 360. Some of you are familiar, may even have a sleep number. Well, they got a new item out. Uh, a Doc Pro Chili Pad Pro Sleep System. And let's see what this is. Uh, smart bed with microclimate appeals to you, but don't want to completely replace your bed to get it. The Doc Pro Plus. Uh, Chili Pad Pro Sleep System is worth cons your consideration. The platform combines three elements to significantly enhance the comfort and quality of your sleep. A mattress pad that's capable of both cooling and warming your body. It's connected to a radiator-like unit that you park under your bed. An ultra-thin sensor pad you place under the pad that can detect things like tossing and turning heart rate, breathing rate, and more. The data isn't just collected to give you sleep score and potentially stress you out with information you can't act on, but is instead used to automatically adjust the temperature of the bed to facilitate better sleep. Oh, there you go. And then if you got a baby in a the house, there's a baby sense cloud. Pet accessories. This is a smart dog collar. And let's see what it says on that. If you're sitting there thinking, well, smart baby mattress sounds pretty good, but I don't have a baby. I have a dog. I love like a baby. Well, then we have good news. At CES this year, Invoxia showed the Apple Watch equivalent of a dog collar, the Invixia smart dog collar. It doesn't just tell you where your dog is, but tracks their exercise and vital stats, like heart rate, too. You'll get insights into everything from their cardio health to how often they are barking and even scratching, so you can get ahead of issues like heart and skin problems. Doesn't give any information on price or availability. A Morphe Zen, for those of you who follow the media, uh, mediation, uh, meditation wellness space, uh, this is, there's apps for it, and this, is a, this goes along with it. This, uh, you may have seen articles about the Movano Ring. For those of you who, who are looking at getting a, a watch, as a smartwatch to monitor health items, this ring will do it and do it uh, in less space and you don't have to worry about the watch. Uh, it comes in four colors, multiple designs, and uh, it comes in four colors and tracks your physical activity, heart rate, temperature, sleep quality. And in some of the articles I've read, it may even be able to do uh, your sh sugar monitoring for you. They're headed, they're headed in that direction. And yep. do, it'll also do oxygen saturation. Yep. Yeah, and they may have it before the Apple comes out with it on their watch, and then the others come out with it on their watch. Everyone is kind of wait, uh, waiting for the monitoring 
uh, uh, for sugar levels. Uh, this we uh, talked about in the last one, that's the scale and the Chipolo card spot. Uh, best oral care is the oral bio. Uh, over the years, uh, smart toothbrushes. And let's see what we can find on this one. Uh, it's a smart toothbrush combines the best of both, both worlds. It's a smart toothbrush that does in fact pair with the smart app functions as a personal dental hygiene coach, but you don't need the app to, for daily use as the toothbrush and charging base provides real-time feedback and information. Brushing too hard, the base brush and the charging base will both turn red to tell you to ease up uh, before you murder your gums. All the other visual uh, feedback you'll expect from an app such as timing also built into the base. So those of you who like toys, there's another one for your mouth. Uh, and the uh, Laurel, uh, I think, or the L'Oreal Color Sonic for uh, the women in the audience. I don't think most of us men will do it, but you know what a lot, uh, let's see, End result, the Color Sonic, a device that looks like a cross between a flat iron uh, and a brush, is actually an advanced cartridge-based hair dye delivery system. I mean, I wonder if it'll work on my beard. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, no pricing or uh, idea when it'll be available. Another vacuum, that was the uh, Ecovax uh, D-Bot X1 uh, Omni. And again, there are a lot of different vacuums out there. Uh, Wi-Fi video sync TV strip lights. And this is... That's something I'd like to try, but not buy. Maybe if Amazon offers it so I can return it because we have a light greenish beige wall that the TV is in front of. And I don't know how the colors you know, will look projecting on the wall behind the screen based on content that's on it and, and whether it would be so distracting from the content that I wouldn't care for it. But they say it's supposed to improve the experience of a smart TV. Yeah, it says it's a camera-based reactive ambient TV light that's a, a direct competitor to the also camera-based Govi ambient TV light system. Both products are in turn as much an economical alternative to the pricey Hue system that uses a dedicated sync box as well as the pricier Hue lights. Not familiar with their, let's see uh, what it says here. Uh, we've both reviewed, let's see, is, uh, da, da, da. rather than dropping the uh, three to 500 on a Hue system, you'll be able to pick this up for $120. If, it, if it's on Amazon, I may get one just to try it. This one, I I almost bought one of these. Uh, the little thing in front uh, doesn't come with it, but it's a, a Bird Buddy smart feeder. And uh, I've talked about this once before. I believe it was on Tech for Seniors. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could catalog the birds that come to your yard? Uh, so when this is like a Pokemon style thing that even when you weren't sitting there sipping your, on your coffee on a work from home break, you'll still know, you'll still know if an elusive uh, is going on. Basically what it's saying is not only do you get photos and videos of the birds that visit your feeder, it uses AI to identify the birds and catalog them for you. Further, the built-in microphone can identify birds by their calls and bird song. So even if a particular bird doesn't land right in front of the camera, uh, but makes a stop in your yard, you'll know what kind of bird it is. Finally, AI and smart technology put to good use. And I can't remember the price of it. It doesn't put it in the article. I think it was around $150, $160. But that's a camera built into it. And as a bird comes up, it's taking it. You can watch the camera close up as it's eating the food and it'll identify the bird and even bird sounds nearby and tell you what kind of bird it is. And you have a, an app that keeps track of all of these things as well. So does it just store the information on uh, locally or does it send the 
uh, RF to your system so that you can actually watch it you, from your I, living I, room. I, you, I believe you can watch it from your your phone anyway, and then okay. broadcast the phone on. I don't know whether uh, you can do anything else like to your TV, except unless you can do it from your phone. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Yeah. Anything yeah, on I, it that anything on it that uh, might indicate how it does with squirrels? I have uh, bird feeders, but getting one to keep the squirrels out is tough. Absolutely, and I've tried about everything there is. Yeah, That's where you get that that hundred and five decibel card and have it go off to scare. The <laughs> but that even scares me. <laughs> in, our uh, part of, in our part of Florida, bird feeders tend to attract bears. I wonder if it'll identify the bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, l- luckily, we don't have any of those in our village, but uh, no, uh, we do have squirrels, and they do uh, a number. And I've I've tried all kinds of things from slinkies to uh, uh, Vaseline on the post and everything else. And I got one that, that works for a while, but, uh, I got one that closes if they get on it. It's, it's built on a spring. And if the squirrel gets on it, it closes the port so they can't get anything. Oh, that's an interesting one. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. It's a long, I, thin one. Yeah. I've got one of those too. And to, to get two squirrels together to disable it. Oh, mine, <laughs> it's adjustable. So mine closes even with my small squirrels. <laughs> okay, the next item is the best home theater, Samsung Freestyle Projector. Projectors are certainly getting smaller. I'm not sure of the lumens on this. It doesn't say in the article uh, because that makes a big difference, of course, on the brightness of the screen in a, in, in a large, uh, uh, in a room that's well lit. But when you're not using the projector to watch videos, you can still enjoy it. Throw the semi-translucent cap over the lens and use the music mode for some cool ambient lighting to go with your tunes. Uh, and it's about 900 bucks, which still isn't a bad price for an item like this. But it doesn't tell what the lumens are, so I'm not sure how, how much in a bright room it would do a good job. And then finally from this source was this, I thought was, and when they said from the, including the kitchen sink, this is a dishwasher. Dan Tech Bob dishwasher, and it's an on the counter dishwasher. And uh, see what it says about that. It's a retro looking countertop dishwasher that's perfect for folks who don't want the convenience of a dish who want the convenience of a dishwasher but are living in small spaces, older apartments without dishwashers, or other living situations where having a dedicated plumbed in dishwasher isn't an option. So why not just hand wash? The Bob dishwasher not only uses five times less water than hand washing, the equivalent amount of dishes, but also dries and sanitizes them with integrated UV light. It's $299, which probably not a bad price. I'm not sure how you get the water into it. Uh, It it doesn't really go into a lot of detail on it, but uh, it's definitely interesting for 300 bucks. About 40 years ago, we had one that was on wheels and it it just plugged up to the to the sink. That's how it got its water supply. And it was a full size dishwasher. And I'm talking 40 years ago. We had and one I think in you the can, apartment. And I think you can still get those as yeah. well. Let okay, me, so that's, uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, let me give you a, a break from what you're doing before we go into the next two. Okay, sure. And and I'll pop ahead to what I was going to do at the tail end, because I don't know when we're going to actually end. So um, what I want to do is show you um, the YouTube playlist that I put together for the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, in my research, Huey... Pick, picked it up because I got diverted during the week and he, he did a great job putting this presentation together. And what I was doing was I was looking for CES videos, especially the press events. So I'm going to very quickly share my screen and show you what those playlists are, which will be provided after the show is over and is on one of the one of the other slides, even though we didn't finish doing it. Let me just go to to my own screen. So you're looking at my YouTube uh, channel 
and I've put together a whole bunch of playlists and I've, I've made it unlisted, but by being unlisted, we're gonna share the link so that you can see it. When I say show more and slide this down, you can see that I have a general list for CES 2022, which is everything that I saw on YouTube of all the videos that I could find or were suggested to me. And it says there's 57 videos. Some of those videos are over an hour long because they were long <laughs> press conferences. So, you know, at your leisure, you could do the same thing just by searching CES 2022. But then as I went through each one of these, I subcategorized them. So for example, there are 24 press conferences that I could find. And some of the key press conferences that you may want to watch, for example, AMD came out with all of their product premieres for 2022 in a 50 minute video. And not to be, um, well, actually I think Intel did it before AMD, so A Intel, did it early on with a 46 minute, uh, 47 minute press conference. And of course, all kinds of sound and special effects and all kinds of stuff that they normally do, except the, the swag giveaways are there. Then uh, as Huey has been posting, he's been posting essentially what the bloggers are putting up on their own websites. So most of those bloggers also have YouTube channels. For example, Lon, TV is a is a YouTube blogger, and he's got uh, this particular dispatch was dispatch was 20 minutes long, and I saw one earlier today that was about 50 minutes long, and plus there are uh, CNET, which is CNET Central, and actually has channels on Amazon and Roku and smart TVs, and they have their their videos so. Their comment was the best car show in a long time was CES 2022, all the electronics and gadgets and stuff. They, every year though, there's a big audio event. And then robotics is coming along, including humanoid type robots. And of course the vacuums that we talked about. And then robotics, Hyundai has got a whole division now mm. that is focusing in on industrial and automotive robotics. And here's our dream robot back. And this is the one I was talking about earlier that has the review about the fact that you can actually talk to it and, and see the videos. Again, uh, chip makers, Intel, uh, AMD, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm. Uh, and then we're doing our best of now. I actually found seven videos, all of, all of them claiming to be the best of. And here's one, all things PC, which defined two hours and 12 minutes of, of PC, the PC world. So instead of watching a feature film, you could be watching this at home. And computers. So we've got the best of the new laptops, which we talked about. We've got the manufacturer's presentations, the folding PCs, uh, a kinetic series of gaming PCs, we just saw the, the release on the Dell. Here's the video of it. Uh, the new Lenovo ThinkPad series and the new Alienware series. And the big shows that we saw when you and I went, the TV manufacturers were always putting on some of the largest and the gaudiest and most extensive booths at CES. So again, and here's a comment about OLEDs versus QLEDs. So you can, you know, you can take a look and see what some of these guys are actually talking about. And I really didn't get a chance to get much on phones other than the Galaxy. Interesting, Apple never participates in CES. So you got to kind of go out on your own to, to get your videos on that. But at any rate, the, the, on this presentation, the copy, you're going to see a link for the CES 2022 overall. You're also going to see a link for the 2022 press conferences and then all these additional categories in our follow-up materials. Uh, I'll either add it to the slides or I'll put out a separate slide with these uh, subcategory links, but you can get them. All the videos are available from this one. And I'll, uh, and I'll add uh, all the links in the description on the uh, YouTube channel. 
the CFCS YouTube channel. You want to take questions up to this point and then continue? Yeah. Questions, comments? Uh, I have a, I looked up the price on that TV projector. It does not get anywhere in the specification give you the lumens. No. Uh, it gives you a distance and it gives you a size and it's $900. I also looked up that computer, that Razor computer and uh, getting it the way it's a high end where I would want it. It's uh, it's over three thousand dollars. Yeah. So um, you got to really want a gaming computer, and not build the desktop. Problem is that that when once you go to a, a thirty eighty or a twenty eighty uh, video board, you're spending upwards of maybe six seven hundred dollars just for the video board. Yep. Stephen. Yeah. So so Mike. Gosh. Yeah. I was wondering. Uh, so we all, you got all of this just by going to YouTube and. I all... started. I started uh, last Sunday, week ago Sunday, a week ago, yeah, today, and I just put in CES 2022 in my YouTube wow. search. Well, and, I mean, and they, you, you know, know, knowing Google, they constantly suggested more and more and more to me. So even the things <laughs> that didn't come up in my search came up in the suggestions. So, so what when you actually physically went? Uh, what did you pay for a ticket to get in? Or is, is it open to everybody? You pay, uh, well, the, the, the charge to go to CES is $150. Okay. Unless, as Huey and I did for a number of years, you qualify as press. Yeah. You qualify as press, you could originally get in as a blogger. Now the requirements to be a blogger is you've got to have how, how many followers on YouTube, how many followers on Facebook. You know, you've got to be nationally syndicated, things like that. And if you did, you got to use the lounges where you got snacks, goodies. Uh, three out of the five days, they would give you a full course luncheon in two of the different locations. Um, all kinds of VIP treatment yeah, and you, special press events. You also had airline ticket and hotel expenses and all oh, that yeah. to go with it. So, yeah, I like what you said early on, how how useful it was to go online and do it. Well, you don't get to, you know, other benefits. My last yeah. trip was yeah. pre-pandemic, uh, probably five years ago now. Yeah. And um, my third day there, I came down with the flu. Ooh. So that tells me I probably picked it up on the airplane going there. Yeah. And the first day wasn't too bad. The second day was terrible. I spent it in bed in the motel, missed the third day of CES. The fourth day, I was, still wasn't feeling good. And the fifth day, I was supposed to go home. Mm -hmm. So I said, if I'm going to fly home, I guess I'm going to miss it here too. So in the hotel, you know, taking DayQuil and NightQuil and whatever else I could take. <laughs> I was using my computer to follow what was going on at CES. And I said, you know, I can do this from home <laughs> a hell of a lot easier. Very good. It is a lot of fun meeting, meeting people there. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and, and sometimes you have hands on, sometimes it's just, it's behind a, a plastic thing, but you can look and actually see it. Uh, but uh, a lot of times they're prototypes and they have a, a picture on a, on a monitor. They don't have the actual monitor working. It's not a working monitor, that sort of thing. Well, I'm sure it was a thrill sitting in that advanced chair. I would have wanted to do that as well, which you couldn't do from your computer. So, yeah. <laughs> well, some of, the, some of the thrills or some of the things to recall is a press uh, dinner. Actually, it was a, it was a uh, APCUG dinner. Um, where the CEOs of the sponsoring companies actually sat down at the tables with us. We had uh, dinner with the chairman of the board of um, Intel at our, Andy, at our Andy, table. Andy Grove, yeah. Andy Grove, yeah, right? Yeah, you and, you and I were at that table, and, and, and I didn't know who he was. And I think I had to ask somebody, who is this guy? Who's he? <laughs> and um, Peter Norton was there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. I've, I've got a picture of me and Peter Norton. And uh, of course, there's the famous Bill Gates incident yeah. where where we were all at a big APCUG uh, presentation that, that Bill was presenting at. 
spot the whole thing was sponsored by Microsoft and they had different vendors at different tables and they had giveaways and and every club had two giveaways one was for the individuals and one was for the club and the club giveaway was win Bill Gates to come to your club sometime in the following year and they drew the ticket and the Boston Computer Society won the drawing and Bill looked at them and said I was just there last month. He said, yeah, draw again. Well, guess who got it? CFCS. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and so Bill Gates came here to Orlando. We got a thousand seat auditorium over in, in uh, one of our business uh, complexes. And uh, it was right near the major expressway that he had to pass in order to get to us around 5 p.m. in the evening, which is rush hour, and he closed down the expressway with so many people trying to get in. Yeah. And our membership went from what, about 200 people to about 1,000? Oh, about 1,300, like yeah. They, yeah. The, the, Microsoft was afraid they wouldn't fill the room, so as an added incentive to get people there, they said they would pay half of the CFCS dues for a year if you joined that night. And yes. we went that night from a couple of hundred people to about thirteen hundred yep. members. Oh, and we and we and we we supported them. Uh, you know, we would get four or five hundred people to our meetings with that kind of membership for a while. Yep. That was nineteen ninety eight. It was out of the Comdex, not the CES. Yes, that's true. The hotel was Maitland Sheraton, I think. It was right near exit 98 on I-4. <laughs> that was just jammed up fantastic. <laughs> they had yeah, that elite I, escort. Yeah, and, and the fire marshals came in and closed the <laughs> building because they wouldn't allow any more people. Because the, <laughs> And they were still lined up on the highway to try to get in. Oh, my God. So memories of, of Comdex and CBS. Yes. Yeah, pleasant memories, friends. Okay, let's see what else we can cover. Okay, uh, any other comments before we do? Uh, I, I know a lot of you are probably getting tired. Uh, I see the numbers are starting to dwindle. I hope there's enough interest. I'll, I'll quickly go through, through the remaining few slides that I have, but let's go ahead and go back to it here. Uh, this is from Wired. I only took a few from the Wired uh, article because a lot of them were the same as the others and some that I thought were just wouldn't be interest but uh, let me click inside of here so I can go to the next slide oh this is something I talked about Monday at Tech for Seniors if you'll notice the in the picture it of, of this of the five uh, pictures of that computer the one in on the left column in front is about half the size of the one in, in the back of that same row. And that's because it folds in half. And when it folds in half, the, the keyboard is the same size. And it's, a, and it's a, a separate keyboard. It's a foldable 17 inch computer. So uh, this is coming from Asus. It's not available yet and uh, no pricing on it. It's 17 inch, so it's not going to be cheap, folks. But boy, does it look neat! And one of my one of my uh, uh, future uh, looks, my prognostications for the year, I said this is going to be the year of the foldable devices. And we're seeing it in phones, and now it looks like we're also going to see it in computers. Uh, pairing and auto switching. I talked about this in one of the others where you can move things from one to the other. Uh, I talked about that earlier in an earlier slide. Uh, Best in Home Entertainment. Samsung has made a remote that never, ever needs new batteries. The Echo Remote, as the South Korean brand calls it, uh, charges from both solar energy and radio waves blasted out by your Wi-Fi router to, say ju to stay juiced up indefinitely. Before uh, you go, go, back, go back to that a second. Um, okay. notice, notice the lack of Logitech Harmony. Uh, I would venture to say there's probably a couple of people in our audience that have Logitech Harmonies. I've got an old one. Um, the attempt to get an all-in-one remote, still my quest, okay? And, I, and I, I have actually gotten in on one of these 
venture capital uh, offers that theoretically in May or June is gonna deliver me an all-in-one remote. But even with my new TV, uh, Sony got away from having your remote control your home theater system, unless it's a Sony. Um, there's, I can't even control the volume on it. I can't even turn the power on and off with the Sony's remote. I have to use two remotes again, one to turn the home theater on, one to take care of the Sony. And a third one, if I'm using my Roku, although I'm using the apps that are on the TV. So I'm, I'm waiting for the, I think it's called Sofa Baton or something similar to that. But I'm waiting for this all-in-one, which I'll review for, for uh, the club when it comes in. But I didn't see anything really focusing in on all-in-one remotes. And I, that's surprising at CES. And uh, this, I think this is the same headphone I showed in the other. Uh, JBL uh, Studio Monitors. The Pico, Pico? The outdoor game console is really a set of lighted handheld controllers aimed at children between the ages of four and 10. The set comes with game cards, suggested games like Whack-A-Mole, uh, Zombie Run, and Math Mania. The child uses their controller to scan a card to play game to play each game. So uh, even the kids' games are going to be uh, IoT stuff. And then the best in the smart home, CES Samsung announced that it's joining the Home Connectivity Alliance, a group of companies included, uh, including other big name appliance makers like GE, Hayer, and the Electro Electrolux Group. The union will work on a set of guidelines to enable secure communication between each other's smart home platforms. So uh, you'll be able to have your washers talk to other companies, refrigerators and stuff, I guess is what they're talking about. And for, the, this is for Ron. Uh, yeah, but there's all kinds of uh, electronic bikes. This year, CES Panasonic and Totem unveiled an e-bike with UL certification, making it the first of the companies in the e-bike sphere besides Bosch, uh, Bosch uh, to seek the gold standard certificate for electric bike sa safety and electronic safety and uh tesla is coming out with an electronic bike harley davidson's coming out with an electronic bike so you're going to see more and more about electronic bikes and uh there's quite a few uh quite a few people in my senior community that have electric bikes in fact one has an electric trike so i think we're going to see more and more of this uh best in gaming uh this is a light boxer. It's, it's for boxing. You see, the, those are boxing gloves on the right, and you box this machine. Uh, resurgence during the pandemic as we've largely stayed indoors. Light boxer VR is if you have the Oculus Quest 2, the company which sells physical pad, you can box it home, and it has a VR, and it now has a VR version. Does it hit back? I hope not. You better duck. <laughs> I bet you Ron is using this for practice for your <laughs> yeah for the upcoming boxing match, right? Yep. <laughs> and UFI security video doorbell dual. Your video doorbell can most likely use its onboard computer vision capabilities to detect family, friends, pets, and strangers. But can it detect packages? The UFI security video doorbell uh, dual boasts all the features of a good doorbell cam needs, like clear 2K camera and an included hub that acts like a Wi-Fi booster while adding a secondary downward facing camera that can accurately identify packages that have been dropped on your doormat. And then from The Verge, this is the last couple of slides. This is the other, this is the Samsung Odyssey Arc. It's a huge 55 inch screen that, that uh, uh, they're still really, let's see, second as a high res 4K solution is enough for sharp text at reasonable distances and highly detailed imagery. And perhaps most importantly, it's aggressively curved, wrapping the screen around, or if you use it in the portrait combination orientation above you. So that's an interesting concept as well. Yeah. 
And then this is another laptop. And e-ink paint found on the BMW concept car where the color changes. The, the actual paint changes color from black to white. So I guess if you get a if you get a ticket and it says you're driving a BMW white car, you can change the color to black and say, well, this ticket's no good. The uh, the one of the videos that, that actually covers this announcement says that they're it's not just a concept car, they expect to go into production this year. Oh, very interesting. And a gar this you mentioned the, the Garmin. Garmin. This is yeah. this is an entry level uh, Vivo Move Sport. Uh, it's a cute watch, affordably priced at one hundred and eighty dollars, and still gets you the bulk of Garmin's in depth health and fitness tracking. It's best suited for casual users. And I also noticed that Garmin has a uh, 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 thing that you can stick on your your uh, windshield that is not only a Garmin. GPS and tells you which turns to, to make, uh, but it also uh, has a uh, cam in it. So you can use it as a, uh, uh, what do they call them, a drive cam. I didn't see and, any announcements from Wise. I'm still wearing my Wise watch. Yeah. <laughs> and then the best gadget for a smart home is the Masonite smart door. It's a Masonite M Power, PWR, smart door that is not a gadget. It's all of the gadgets. This smart door puts every device you need to control the main access point to your home in one. A video doorbell, a smart lock, motion activated smart lighting, even door sense capability to warn you when it's left open. And it's powered by your home, not hundreds of disposable batteries. You have to charge change every six months. So it's a whole door that has to be put in place. And it, at this point, it's not going to be available for us as end users, it will be for uh, home builders. I would think but, so. But uh, the whole door has all of the devices you want. And this is a list of all of the articles that I used to uh, build this. And then uh, and there's some other best of lists. And then uh, Mike uh, will we'll put in a slide of the uh, uh, of his good. videos. The and schedule. We'll, we'll, I was going to say the correct. schedule. The, this is, you know, I was asked how I did this. Actually, the step prior to the YouTube search was to actually go on to CES and take a look at their schedule of events, which includes all the press conferences. So if you actually go to the link that's here, which will be out in there, you'll actually go to this page you can get a complete list of all of the conferences from all of the exhibiting manufacturers that had conferences and then do your own searches online if you wish. You can filter down by category, that type of thing. So if you, if you have time to spare, you can fill <laughs> it with information. Yes. And lots of it. Lots. And then the YouTube list. That's my, that's my links and I will, get, I will update that with all the others. Guys, that was fantastic. I really appreciate your time and efforts on that. Very informative. And may I suggest, um, if you can put something onto the uh, TechSig mailing, at least your YouTube channels, the exact yeah. link to where to go for both of those, both yours, Mike, and uh, and Huey's, please. Fantastic. Uh, and, and, and for uh, other user groups, you're welcome to, uh, once we get the video up, you can uh, grab this and just uh, show the very, just certain items if you want. You don't have to use the whole thing. You can use pieces and parts of it uh, uh, if you find something that you think would be interesting to your members. So any comments from anybody? Good job. I, I got it. enjoyed it. Open the door. Outstanding. Everything was great. Very it was useful. fun put it was fun putting it together. Sure. So okay, Stan, I'll uh, let you close out the meeting and we'll yeah. end the recording in a few minutes. Well, uh, Bob, I'm not sure. Bob G, I'm not sure if you're still there, but I appreciate your yes. part. This Thank you. This first part of the meeting is all very informative and uh, appreciate everyone's efforts and uh, stay safe and uh, we'll see you all next time. <laughs>